Alex Timbers is the director of John Mulaney, Baby J on Netflix. I'm David Buchanan with Gold Derby. Alex, I wanted to start by asking you first and foremost, this is John Mulaney's most raw and self-deprecating and intimate special. Yeah. So how did you approach this work differently than, you know, your, your numerous collaborations with him over the years? Yeah, so this is very different than Kid Gorgeous or even like the stage show we did, Oh Hello. Um, uh, as you said, much more personal, much more intimate. And so, you know, the way we began the process, but was by really talking about what he wanted to it to feel like and what he wanted to the audience's relationship to him to be. You know, he performed this show in arenas and made a really conscious choice that for the special, though he wanted to be in a smaller, more intimate venue. And so that was the name of the game was was intimacy. Yeah. Yeah, that comes across really uh, clearly and, and beautifully. I want to ask you, too, as director, I know that John was workshopping this material for a long time on the road. When you come in to direct a special, um, how do you help him structure the material? How much of you know your kind of input on um, the sequencing and the structure, especially in the edit, too, when you're seeing you know what material to include and, and how? Um, just talk about your process of shaping the show with him after he's done so much work on you know, perfecting yeah. the material. Yeah, well, that's a great question. So, so he worked, I, he was touring the material for roughly around two years. And, you know, he, to me, he's one of the, like the greatest writer, comedic writers of our generation. And so uh, by the time we actually shot it for Netflix, he actually had really developed something where he felt really clear and confident about what the structure was. And so um, while we tinkered a little bit with him post and he was very sort of open to ideas of like what we take out and there was some reordering, uh, it was really kind of like, I got to give him all the credit for like, it was really fully developed by that point. He kind of really knew what he wanted. And he also knew that, you know, he didn't want it to be 60 minutes and he really pushed for it to be 80 minutes. And I'm proud of him because I, I think it really holds that time. It does. It, it flies. Um, and and I, I do think, as you're saying, everything is in the right place um, and, and the pace is, is just right. So um, that's props to him and, and to you. Um, I want to ask you about that opening. We'll talk a lot about, you know, the sure. physicality of the space, but let's dive into the opening shot because it's so unique and special. And I think it frames him so interestingly and the audience too. We have that beautiful kind of tracking shot down, we circle around John to see the audience, we pull out, it kind of gives a real scope um, and kind of grandeur to this space, which is not a huge venue, as you're saying, he's been doing this material in larger yeah. spaces. But talk about, you know, the thought process of opening the special in this way and such a unique kind of shot um, and movement to the to the opening. Yeah, so I think we knew that people wanted to get to the story, you know, and so with Kid Gorgeous, we did this sort of elaborate cold open that was really fun uh, and atmospheric. And for this, I think John really just wanted to sort of be there. And, and the idea of starting at sort of in media res and him walking into frame felt really exciting. And then, of course, thinking about the kind of like how to make a kind of cinematic theatrical reveal of the space by featuring the thing that attracted him to the space in the first place was that major like pipe organ that's that frames it. So starting there, having John enter into it mid, you know, in the middle of his set and then turning around him and revealing the audience was really, uh, it felt like the, sort of the building blocks of how to kind of get the audience into it in a way that felt dramatic. It was a great collaboration between John, myself and the DP Cameron Barnett. Yeah, let's talk about the space. You mentioned the organ. This is Boston Symphony Hall. Yeah. An, an absolutely beautiful theater and a really interesting kind of layout in terms of where the audience is sitting too. We kind of have, you know, uh, not surrounding, but um, a lot of different places and, and kind of reactions from different parts of the audience. Just talk about working in that space. Um, what were the challenges? What was so exciting about, you know, that really beautiful theater that gives it a real grandeur to the special? Yeah, so that place is very exciting. It has these, you know, amazing statues that line it, and it has this incredible pipe organ, and the audience is right there with the performer. Uh, but it's also got a ton of challenges. Uh, so there's no place to hide, you know, reverses, backlight, like the symphony hall without Scott Pass set is just like three walls, and it's just completely open. And it's also uh, the entire uh, space is sort of blonde and white and so it just light reflects everywhere so we knew we had to like sort of do something dramatic if we wanted to embrace this room 
So uh, Scott uh, Pass, the set designer, really riffed off the architecture of the space and created this kind of great kind of coffered wall uh, sort of background that was like 15 feet tall. It was sort of a major build, but it allowed us to hide cameras, hide side light, hide backlight, and also to have a, uh, a kind of set that transformed. So we lined the whole uh, room with Neoflex, which could kind of turn all different colors, sort of like an LED neon product. Um, we use it on theater shows that work on like Here Lies Love. And it's just, it's a, it's like a, it's a great product. And we were really inspired by, you know, John is very contemporary, but he's also kind of got this amazing kind of throwback quality. And for the Kid Gorgeous special, that was something we really leaned into. And we wanted to kind of embrace that here too. So we were like, what would be a kind of production design that made you feel, it felt organic to the space. Like if you had never been there, you'd be like, oh yeah, that is what Boston Symphony Hall looks like. But could also transform and feel kind of really contemporary and electrify. And we knew we wanted to take you on a big lighting color journey through the show. So that that production design uh, really helped achieve like a ton of things from the lighting department, camera department, et cetera. Uh, we also uh, put a floor in that allowed us to, to darken the room so that our spotlights and backlights and stuff weren't bouncing off crashing around the whole place. You know, another thing that's really interesting about John working with him is he doesn't like just like reaction shots. He likes always to always to feel like, you know, you're seeing the relationship between him and the audience. So that's always like reverses, profile, et cetera. But it's never like just cutting to a person laughing in the audience. And I think that's a taste thing. And it's a, a thing, you know, he's got great taste and I really revere him for that. So one of the things we were really experimenting with that space too was like, as you mentioned, like it's just symphony hall. So there are people like actually like in sort of at 90 degrees to him on either side and really high up. We were like, how do we get this intimate performance as much into the room as possible? So we explored a thrust stage, like doing all this like crazy stuff to the room. And eventually uh, when we sort of like laid it all out and CAD and scenic, you know, just looked at it from every different way. We were like, okay, this is, this is a way to harness that intimacy, to provide us the camera positions, to provide us a room that transformed, to give us the, all the best kind of lighting options in a really unique, exciting room that has lots of problems. <laughs> so, yeah. That's so interesting to hear because as you're saying, if you're not familiar with the space, um, you would think that's this is what it looks like, but to hear the transformation to make this work technically is so so interesting to hear. Let's talk a bit more about the audience, which you just mentioned, yeah. because there's a great moment um, of audience interaction at the at the top of the show with yeah. a young with a young fan. Um, and John's kind of warning him about the maturity of the material. Um, obviously, this is live and you shot a few different performances, so spontaneity and recording, you know, live performance is always yeah. key for you. But when you get a moment like that, you know, how exciting is it? What's going What's going on, you know, at Video Village or wherever you're located yeah. during those kind of moments, um, you know, choosing the cameras, knowing exactly what to do when, when something like that happens off the cuff? Yeah, so we were, you know, we were thrilled. Uh, you know, John didn't do that every night, obviously. That was really unique. And uh, and so in the control room, we were frantically trying to find this young, young kid who's like tiny and he was in a balcony and we did the best we could. I, I think it, it cuts together fine. And, but uh, uh, he is, uh, yeah, that was an amazing, spontaneous, wonderful moment. And, and John really like knew immediately after that performance, like, oh, that has to, has to be part of the special. Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad it's there and ties so well with kind of the opening story of his childhood too. Yeah. Um, so it's, it works really well. Let's talk about the physicality of, of John's set too, yeah. because something I really appreciate about his work is it's not static either in the storytelling or no. just the way he engages the space. And there's some beautiful shots that you do, you know, tracking shots um, left and right from the kind of orchestra vantage point um, as, as John performs. How much do you know when you're planning, you know, planning your shots and you know the material, how much you want to follow John as he's moving around, how much to keep the camera kind of static and maybe pan versus track. Um, just talk about, you know, those decisions yeah. in your head. That, that's a great question. I mean, one of the things that is amazing about John is, is as you said, his like physicality is so expressive. And so that's why we wanted to really have like dynamic shots. We had that, um, I think the shot you're talking about, like this, like a rail cam shot right from the front row looking up at him. And so 
you know, having watched a bunch of uh, shows, I sort of have a sense of like, okay, this is a place where he might move right or left or, or very quickly. And so I'm trying to give a heads up to the camera operators and to uh, the follow spot operators as well. And so we're anticipating moments like that. And if they happen, we're hopefully in the right position either to follow him or counter him. Um, another thing that was is really important in that too is always keeping in mind the audience and wanting to feel like you're in the room, you know, because obviously this thing is about recreating what it feels like to be in the room that night at Boston Symphony Hall. So a lot of it is is actually being very embracing the backs of people's heads and all that and really casting you in the audience as a viewer in that room, trying to give you that privilege vantage point, as opposed to always just having him kind of clean of audience and unaware of that. The other thing that he, you know, that his expressive physicality allows us to do really is have these great reverses, you know, that you're really seeing this sort of like athletic kind of performance uh, and you're capturing it from behind in these amazing silhouettes with just the expanse of, uh, of Boston Symphony Hall. So that balancing the like kind of scope with intimacy is really the key. And then in other points, we did something I've never done before where we had like for a comedy stuff, we had like a, a steady cam on stage for some of it, which is just really so sort of toggling between those kind of big monster wides of the symphony hall and then being really tight with him. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about feeling like you're in the room because the special does that so well in the hall and John does that so well with the material on being in his intervention, yeah. being in rehab. I just wanted to talk to you about pacing. We talked a little bit earlier about that, but what's so unique, I find about the special is we really have these big kind of tentpole moments, right? There's these landmarks in his life that he's taking us into in detail. I just wanted to ask you about the pacing of these stories because we spend a lot of time on the intervention, but in a way that really is very fleet and, and kind of moves is very kind yeah. of agile. Just talk about, obviously, like we said, John has perfected this material over time, but really keeping the kind of stories within the larger kind of arcs you know, moving, um, especially because, as you said, the special has a little bit of a longer runtime than than is uh, traditional. Yeah. So if you, if you saw John on tour in the From Scratch tour, uh, the really, you know, it's just kind of one lighting cue or two lighting cues, and it was against a kind of a green curtain. And so what we were trying to do was kind of find the like architecture of his act and like where where do locations shift? Where do you feel your where do you want your heart to quicken? Where do you want to just be like with him like sustained and so there were a couple of ways we could kind of try to amplify those things and one of those was lighting that the neoflex big lighting cues and just trying to like almost chart it like you do like a one-man show in theater or something and build a color journey and kind of when he goes to from the intervention to rehab you shift there when you go back into you know back to new york city it shifts and things like that and or a really emotional int intimate moment it there might be a big color world shift there so that's one thing that helps us with the kind of pacing and kind of like structure uh another thing obviously is the speed of the cutting we had this amazing editor kelly leon uh who john used to work with at snl uh and was really looking at how do we like quicken the pulse and then how do we but and then at some moments how do we just like stay with him in one shot for like a minute and uh and that's really exciting and so finding that kind of pacing variation and then the final thing is like as you said it's like it's those camera shots and those how do you how do you pace them in a way that feels dynamic and so when you're using the like uh the that sort of like uh up angle uh, shot from the front row or those those moments where you're sort of like pedestaling down and things like that. Those just give it dynamic movement and also help with the kind of pace, uh, pace and edge of the, uh, of, of, and again, it's all just taking what John's doing, just trying to like gently support it. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of that gentle support, I want to ask you about the real moments of sincerity mm -hmm. in the special, because I love, you know, those kind of moments where the humor kind of stops for him to thank, you know, the folks who were at his intervention. Yeah. And of course, we kind of have a great, you know, punchline that follows. But I just want to ask you about navigating the tone of the special. We talked a little bit earlier about this is so unique and to capture that intimacy, but to really kind of get into, you know, how long to kind of pause those beats on this is something really sincere. And I want to con convey this point before, you know, snapping right or back. Or undercutting it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's a, it's a fantastic question. We spent a lot of time in post talking about that, about the moments where you want them to feel really emotional. And then when you want to just move right out of it. I think that's one of the things that's wonderful about John Special is it's, it's deep, it's meaningful, it's personal, but it's also always funny. And that was important to John that, uh, that it's, it's earnest, but it doesn't kind of wallow, if that makes sense. And so that was a, a calibration in the editing process that we, we spent a lot of time on. Uh, and I feel like we got it sort of right where, where he hoped for, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, John mentions that towards the end of the special, that these are the stories that he felt comfortable sharing, um, you know, as yeah. kind of a wink to how much worse, you know, some circumstances might have been. Were there any moments of the special that were left on the cutting room floor that you really wish, you know, were, were included in, in the 80 minutes? You know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's the process, the post process was, was fascinating because there was such a, like a consciousness of saying like, okay, this is 80 minutes. This is longer than most stand-up specials. So we were always looking to like kind of prune where we could. And John was, uh, really uh like often the first one to be like what about losing that what about losing that and so you know there's a conversation about like an uncomfortable chair at the intervention and things like little bits that were that are great and i find very funny but they're not you know fundamental to the story um and so uh i think all that kind of stuff that we lost i don't i don't think you know like late at night i don't think any of us really are like oh gosh i would you know just really wish that had been included you know one of the one of the things that's like really was it really interesting about the post process too, just to tell you a little anecdote, was um, you know this room is like 120 years old. It's it's a old theater, and so we we're going in. We were talking about the pros and cons, and had these like wood floors that kind of creaked, and we were like a little nervous about what that meant. And uh, and so the first night we were there, we were shooting mostly focused on reverses. On the uh, we shot three performances. And we were noticing like as the the sort of like back of house camera. So the people that were like front on him and Titus were like, there was like a little bounce. And we were like, what, what is that? And we were like, oh, we just need to secure the platform. And people were like, oh, this would be fine. And someone was like, well, you know, this woman kept going up to go to the bathroom. And, you know, and I think that, you know, I think that maybe that's what it was. And we we're like, okay, that seems odd, but sure. And then the second performance, we were like, oh, this is really a problem because now we have all the frontal cameras point them and everything's going like you're like on a boat and uh it turned out that the laughter in the audience was making the floor shake and the whole building move and so every time he landed which is you know like multiple times a minute because he's so funny uh the, like all the cameras were going like this so a lot of the post process was actually focused on stabilization of cameras which is a was a huge problem but a you know funny problem to have too i think that really speaks to you know the quality of the material um alex timbers congratulations on baby thanks so j thanks so much for talking to gold derby today thank you mm -hmm.